Hi, everyone. Welcome to another My Kids Locker COVID-19 Ed podcast episode. This is Victoria Wolders, your host, and I'm so glad you joined us today. Today's episode is on the Mint Mountains. I came up with this idea when I started to think about all the different words that have meant in them, like discouragement or encouragement. And I decided to take that idea and put them into a story. Well, I hope that you enjoy today's story. And we are now moving on to listen, an opportunity to have a mindful moment. To part one, are you comfy? Are you cozy? Well, get ready to listen. Well, here we are, and this is an opportunity for us to listen. Here we go. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. This was said by Maya DeAngelo. She is a lady who is a poet. She's passed away now, but Maya Angelo was a lovely lady who took some time to reflect on the important pieces of life, such as love and joy and peace and kindness and care. If you have an opportunity to look her up, definitely learn more about what a wonderful poet and writer she was. I'll say the quote again. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away by Maya Angelo. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this time to reflect on a wonderful statement on life. On to part two. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two today. We are going to create something amazing and let's get craft, 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 bye. Welcome to part two. This is Victoria and this is an opportunity for me to give you an activity to do at home. Well, today's story is called The Mint Mountains. I would love for you to be able to draw pictures of the mountains today, label them with descriptive words and with color. It would be awesome for you to be able to show me what you think these mountains look like. And I would love to be able to have an opportunity to see them. So definitely reach out to me because I would love to see a picture. Okay, on to the story, The Mint Mountains. Okay, once upon a time, a long time ago, in the land of the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, in the land of the Northern Eagle, there was a range of mountains that were called the Mint Mountains. What was so interesting about the Mint Mountains was that each of the mountains had very interesting names. One of the mountains was called Compliment. One was called Sentiment. One was called Encouragement. And these three were the tallest and would always have the sun hitting them first. There were some lower mountains, one called Discouragement, and one called Judgment. And these five mountains made up the mountain range of the Mint Mountains. Well, what was fascinating about these mountains was they had very unique animals. So what would happen would be When the sun was rising, the animals would be part of the trees. And then as the sun rose, the the animals were released from the trees because they were no longer part of the shadow when the sun set. So as soon as the sun came up and there were shadows, the animals were part of the shadows of the trees and could not leave the shadows. It was almost like the 
the shadows and captured the animals. And so when you walked through the Mint Mountains during the day, there were no animals. There were no birds singing. The only thing you could hear was the wind and the rain and the water. But at nighttime, that was a different story. Because as soon as the sun set, the animals were freed from the shadows and they would wander the land. So in other parts of the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, where there were nocturnal animals, where they were only out at nighttime and slept during the day, and um, all of the animals in the Mint Mountains were nocturnal. So they wandered around at nighttime. So just like raccoons would. So this was a very special mountain range. And all five mountains, Complement Mountain, Sentiment Mountain, Encouragement Mountain, Discouragement Mountain, and Judgment Mountain all played a very important role in the shadows. So, one day, a princess was walking through um, onto the mountains, and she arrived at Judgment Mountain. And as she was just about to go onto the Judgment Mountain, she started to hear voices from the shadows. The sun was rising, and all the animals were now gone into the shadows of the trees. And on occasion, when she looked at a shadow of one of the trees, she might, if she was lucky, see the face of a deer or the, the wing of a bird that was stuck in the shadows. And she would... Judgment, judgment Mountain was always a darker place for her. She would go into this mountain because she knew that eventually it would get her to Compliment Mountain, but she had to go through Judgment Mountain first. So as she went to Judgment Mountain, she could hear people, her voices of her past, say, you are not good enough. And the only way to combat those judgment statements was for her to empathize with the people who gave them to her and to think about why would they say those words. And when she was able to use empathy to feel what the other person feels, she was able to overcome their judgment and their shame. She was able to walk over Judgment Mountain in the morning. She soon arrived at Discouragement Mountain. And as she looked at Discouragement Mountain, it was looming over her. And she felt so discouraged to think, how am I ever going to get to Encouragement Mountain? But for some reason, she was able to do it. But once again, she also heard voices, voices of discouragement. And she heard words like, you're not good enough. You won't make it. But she knew she would. And so those voices that she heard, she would just say back to them, I am doing the best I can with the tools and the skills I have, and I'm going to try to overcome my struggles. As she continued to journey from Judgment Mountain to Discouragement Mountain, she moved on to Encouragement now, when she hit encouragement, it was starting to be dusk, and it started to get quite dark out. And at that very moment, as the sun set and the dusk was gone, she started to hear animals, and the animals were beautiful. She heard robins, and she heard um, sounds of pitter-patter of mice and the sounds of deer. She heard the gentle cooing of um, of beautiful owls that were in her tree in the trees and she saw all the beautiful animals come out out of the shadows well she lay down and she decided to set up a fire and as she set up the fire 
All of a sudden, a f- owl swooped down to her, and he said, "Wow, welcome to Encouragement Mountain. What are you doing here, Princess?" She said, "Well, I have heard much about the Mant Mountains. I've heard much about the Judgment Mountain, Discouragement Mountain, Encouragement Mountain, Sentiment Mountain, and Compliment Mountain." And I really, really wanted to venture in to really learn about the mountains, and I wanted to really find out if it's true that all the living creatures, as soon as the sun rises, are encaptured by the shadows. The owl said, "Yes, we are indeed, but many of us are unhappy. We want to fly when the sun is shining. We want to see the beautiful." Um, Rivers glistening. We want to see the leaves flowing at noon in the mountain breeze. We want to see the beautiful blue skies, but we don't have that. We want that, though. The princess looked at the owl and said, "How can I help you?" He said, "Well, there was a wizard that once walked through our the Mant Mountains." And he did cast a curse on our mountains, and the curse was that all living things had to go into the shadows as soon as the sun rose. The only way of being able to get that back, and for all living creatures to be freed from the shadows, is for someone to go through all three mountains and to be able. To find the golden chalice, she said, "Golden chalice. What's the golden chalice?" He said, "Well, I've been told that the golden chalice is a beautiful goblet that the wizard once had, and he used this goblet. And what he did is he filled it up with um, sparkling water." Um, from the rivers that run through the Mant Mountains, and what he did is he used that goblet as he walked through, and he cast the spell of the shadows. If you find the golden chalice, if you lift it up to the sun, just at that point where the sun is exactly at high noon. And you are on Compliment Mountain at that high noon, and you say, "May all the shadows be gone." Then, all the shadows will be gone. But the person holding the chalice has to have a pure heart, has to be able to make sure that they have no shame in their heart, and their heart is not hardened. Because if their heart is hardened, Then all the animals will be kept in the shadows forever. She said, "Well, how do I get this golden chalice? I want to rescue you from the shadows." He said, "Oh, I've been told it's been hidden, and it's been hidden somewhere in Sentiment Mountain. <sighs> well, where would I find it?" She said, "Well, I was told by some eagles that there are golden flakes that are on the trail." And if you follow the golden flakes, you will find the golden chalice. So the owl flew away, and the next day she decided she was going to rescue all the living things from the shadows. She was, and this was Encouragement Mountain. She realized that she could do this, so she traveled through Encouragement Mountain the next morning, and the next day she eventually reached Sentiment Mountain. As she reached Sentiment Mountain, she started to see the golden flakes that were on the trail. She followed the golden flakes, and it went to the edge of a cliff. There, at the edge of the cliff, she looked down, <coughs> and all of a sudden, she saw the golden flakes floating above a great chasm. She thought, "What do I do with these golden flakes? They're floating in midair." And at that very moment, she realized this was Sentiment Mountain. And if she thought about encouragement words for those people who have may have hurt her in the past, 
in discouragement and judgment that maybe she would be able to walk on the golden flakes that would lead her to the other side of the chasm. So she started to think about those voices. One voice was a boy that she knew when she was younger who told her she wasn't good enough. She said, I forgive him. And at that very moment, she took a step out and landed on a golden brick. They weren't flakes anymore. They were bricks. And it looked like there was a path. She kept on thinking, okay, who else was saying words to me? And soon she kept stepping and stepping. And before she knew it, there was a golden brick bridge that was that was bridging the chasm. She looked to the other side and there she saw the golden chalice. As she walked, she quickly kept on thinking of all the people that had said hurtful words in Judgment Mountain and Discouragement Mountain. And she realized that she had forgiven them and that she realized that they had been hurt and that the worst victim is the victim that chooses to create another victim. So, as she got to the other side, she grabbed hold of the golden chalice and looked behind her, and there was a golden bridge full of beautiful brick. Soon, she looked over to the other side of the chasm, and there she saw a compliment mountain. She thought to herself, I think I might be able to make it for tomorrow. So she set up camp, and that night all the animals came alive, and an eagle flew down just before she was about to go to sleep, the land of the northern eagle, and a northern eagle whispered her in mouth, we are grateful for you. We thank you for your heart. We thank you for your sentiment. This is Sentiment Mountain, and you will be going on to Compliment Mountain. I will, I will try my best to soar through the shadows, and when you see my shadow, you know that you are getting close to the mountaintop. I believe that you will free us all. And she fell asleep. That night she had a dream, a dream that all the animals were free from all the mountains, and she didn't need to worry, and no one else needed to worry anymore about the birds and the deer and the raccoons and the owls and the eagles being caught in the shadows between sunrise and sunset. And so she woke up the next morning, a little bit before dawn, and she noticed all the beautiful animals surrounding her. She turned to them and shared a sentiment and said, I will free you today. And at that point, she grabbed the golden chalice, and they went into the shadows as the sun was rising. She managed to make her way to Compliment Mountain through the beautiful aspen trees. As she looked behind her and around her, she could see the shadows from the sun hitting the aspen trees, and on occasion, she'll see that northern eagle swooping in and out of the shadows, almost like he was guiding her. He man- she managed to get right to the top of Compliment Mountain, and she held up the golden chalice just as the sun was at the front, and the sun cast a shadow down into the gold- golden chalice, and all of a sudden, bright light came, and she realized she was at the highest point of all the meant mountains. She was above Judgment Mountain above Discouragement Mountain, above Encouragement Mountain, above Sentiment Mountain, and here she was, above all, on Compliment Mountain. She held up the chalice, and all the light just shone from this beautiful chalice and hit all the trees and all the, all the valleys and all the chasms and even the Golden Bridge. And as she looked across the land of the Northern Eagle in the Ment Mountains, all five mountains burst with life and the animals, the raccoons, the owls, the sparrows, the robins, the owls, the wildlife, the insects, the butterflies, the moths, the bees, yep, all came out from the shadows and she realized at that very moment that meant the meant mountains were now free and their animals and living things and insects were free from the shadows. 
She looked at a pa- she paused and looked at the golden chalice, and she was grateful for all the good things that she was given, and the gratitude she had to be able to be used as an instrument to help free all of living things from the Ment Mountains. The end. Hi everyone, it's time to innovate part three. Well. Here we are, part three, an opportunity for us to be able to extend our learning and do some more innovating. So mountains have traditionally been places where people want to conquer. Learn about Mount Everest on the internet with many people visiting. How has Mount Everest been impacted by people? How has the environment been impacted? What have people done to protect Mount Everest from being polluted? Take some time today to learn a little bit about Mount Everest on the internet and learn a little bit about what the tallest mountain in the world or the highest mountain in the world looks like. If you want, maybe even just talk to those around you because maybe the internet may not be available at this time. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson, the Ment Mountains, and I hope that you'll join us again for another episode. Until next time, less screens, listen, create, and innovate. Have an awesome day. <laughs>